All right, so next we're going to talk about NURBS. So coming from our discussion of Bezier curves, uh, let's start with a few facts about NURBS so that we can uh, move forward and clearly understand what they're all about. So first of all, the name NURBS stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Spline. And uh, well, as the name suggests, NURBS uses something called B-Splines, uh, which are short for basis splines. B-splines are generalizations of Bezier curves, so very similar actually, uh, but a generalization, and they're a bit more complex than Bezier curves in that they introduce something called knots. We'll talk about knots in just a second. And so finally, uh, NURBS are basically a generalization of both uh, Bezier curves and B-splines, and they include this other feature uh, where we're, we're able to assign a weight value to each control point. And, uh, well, this weighting is why NURBS are called rational, uh, whereas uh, non-rational B-splines use constant weights of 1. So in effect, and what you need to walk away from this lecture understanding, is that NURBS is a mathematical model for creating curves and surfaces, which operates much like Bezier curves, while offering a few additional capabilities. Now, NURBS are used in CAD, uh, or computer-aided design, uh, right, and, and other parametric modeling applications. In the past, NURBS were used for modeling in feature animation. However, the practice has been abandoned in favor of the flexibility and robustness offered by sub-D modeling. So this process was used in uh, in the entertainment industry uh, a number of years ago, however, not anymore. I am honestly not aware of uh, any any studio that extensively uses NURBS for anything entertainment related uh, today. However, there are still uses for NURBS in uh, maybe film or game production. Hard surface artists frequently turn to CAD packages to create poly models for concept art and uh, perhaps even background assets. The reason for this is the speed at which you can design hard surface components. And while well, there's quite a few design languages, you know, like sci-fi and stuff like that, which require a lot of hard surface detail. Again, to be clear, uh, hero hard surface assets will still be modeled in sub D. However, using a CAD package offers considerable advantage in uh, creating poly models for maybe for concepting those hero assets or for perhaps even for creating mid-ground or background poly assets. So this is an example of something designed in uh, Autodesk's Fusion 360. It's a pretty straightforward uh, CAD package uh, really designed for hobbyists and people uh, looking to you know just do casual like product design or something like that. I know it's used a lot by Again, like hobbyists uh, trying to design stuff to 3D print and stuff like that. Um, so it's definitely not as like feature rich as something like uh, AutoCAD, but it is still a, a great choice for a simple CAD modeling package uh, if you're interested in uh, doing some of this hard surface design, even for um, like a, like film or, or, or game applications. So just to give you an idea of how uh, this how this works and how it's different from poly modeling, you know, let's say I wanted to add in another little detail here, like maybe maybe a little uh, cutout from this edge. Um, well, at least uh, the way this works in uh, Fusion 360 is I can I can create a sketch. I can kind of draw out uh, this box shape. So maybe I'll just go ahead and do that. Just create this sketch here. And then uh, let's let's kind of do a cutaway and kind of extrude this down, uh, doing doing sort of a subtraction operation, just cutting cutting a an area out of the parent shape. So you'll notice that there were no polygons available to me here. Uh, every feature and surface here is defined implicitly using mathematical equations. And so there's, you know, there's, there's no resolution limit here. We can, we can zoom in as far as we want and still get perfectly clean and smooth surfaces. Uh, and it's, it, it's really quite remarkable what you, can, uh, what you can model with software like this. 
Uh, however, uh, you do just need to keep in mind that um, if you choose to export this uh, as a poly model, you will have, well, you'll, you'll have poly topology. Uh, it, it will be very triangle heavy and uh, you know, Im virtually impossible to subdivide. So you will need to keep that in mind uh, based on what you're designing and uh, what purpose it, uh, it holds. Another use of NURBS in modeling is as a means of quickly creating wires or cables. We can essentially extrude shapes along the length of a curve and have the shape bend nicely as it follows the path. So here's how NURBS are constructed. A NURBS curve has a degree, so a, uh, a curve of degree one would be a linear curve and uh, really is just a polyline. It's, there's, there's no smooth interpolation between points. Degree two curves or quadratic curves are generally used for circles. And then again, generally speaking, a cubic or, or degree three curve is used for a general freehand curve shapes. The order of a NURBS curve is equal to its degree plus one. A NURBS curve has control points or control vertices, as they're called in, in Maya. And these act in a similar way to the points of a Bezier curve. A curve will have the same number of control points as its order, uh, but just keep in mind that, well, for example, with a degree three curve, uh, we actually connect uh, multiple curve segments together to form a longer curve. However, uh, the degree of the curve is still three. Each control point has an associated weight value. Knots are a set of values which dictate how the control points will affect the curve. So far we've been looking at fairly smooth curves, but if we needed to insert a hard bend into the curve, altering the number of knots would accomplish this. The number of knots for a curve will be equal to its degree plus the number of control points minus one. Knots are represented as just a list of indices corresponding to the control points they apply to. The number of times a knot value is duplicated is called the knot multiplicity, and a full multiplicity knot is duplicated degree many times. So if I wanted to add a hard bend into this NURBS curve, I'd first need to select a point along that curve, and then go to the curves menu and uh, insert knot. And uh, so I'm gonna be inserting a, a knot at selection, and I'm gonna set this to full multiplicity, right? So it's a degree three curve, so multiplicity is three. We'll apply that and uh, now go to control vertex selection. We can see that new uh, control vertices have been added in here with this one uh, giving us a very, uh, very hard uh, bend in the curve, right? So that is a way of uh, controlling the NURBS curve and getting it to behave exactly as you wish. Now, much like how we solved for different points with the Bezier equations, the same thing happens with a NURBS curve, except using what is called the evaluation rule. And finally, we come to NURBS surfaces. So in a similar way to how we discussed Bezier curves, NURBS curves evolve in one parametric direction. So again, if we intersect NURBS curves and form a grid of sorts, we can evolve two variables across the resulting surface and find points that sit on it. This by default will be a rectangular surface, and in order to remove unwanted parts, we're able to actually trim that surface by defining boundaries around it using other NURBS curves. In order to view the resulting implicit surface, we will need to tessellate it. And all that means is just converting it into an explicit surface that we can efficiently render. This can be done by evaluating certain points along the implicit surface, treating them as vertices, and then drawing polygons between them. 